So, you're in STEM. Maybe you're a physicist who secretly likes the derivations more than the lab. You didn't care much about aligning lasers, but you lived for the moments when an equation just tied it all together. Maybe you're in computer science and you keep stumbling into some matrix operations you don't quite understand. Like, sure, NumPy does work and it works really well, but what is that dot product doing from a geometrical point of view? Or maybe you're an engineer whose soul was quietly broken by Laplace transforms and now you're thinking, I want to go deeper, I want to get good at maths. But here's the catch, you did not actually study maths formally. You chose another path and now that you're looking at these things again, whether it's for quant roles, for AI, for ML research, or just pure intellectual curiosity, you're facing the wall of dense notations and very unfamiliar concepts. You might even be staring at textbooks thinking something like, wait, what even is a sigma algebra? Why are all the diagrams suddenly in 4D? And what's with all the epsilons and deltas? everywhere. Well, if that's the case, this video is for you, because whether you're pivoting into quant, into machine learning, or just want to finally understand the maths behind the tech, I'm going to show you how to build a really, really strong foundation, which is rigorous, and honestly, I would say it's pretty fun. And no, you definitely do not need to go back to uni and start from maths 101. So let's get right into it. Let's just say it up front. If maths feels really hard for you right now, it's not because you're not smart. If you've made it through physics, through engineering or computer science, you already know that your brain is just fine. The issue is not intelligence, it is exposure, mindset and training. And here's what's happening. You're used to maths as a tool, not as a subject. In engineering, in physics, in CS, maths is mostly functional. It's something you use in order to solve a problem. You plug into a formula, you manipulate it, you get a result, and your job is done. Pure maths is a bit different. The goal isn't just to compute, it's to understand. You are essentially asked why something works, to generalize beyond the specific uh, particular case, to see structure where others see chaos. It's a different mode of thinking, really, one where the destination matters, but the path to get there matters even more. The second point is that nobody taught you how to read maths. Maths notation is like a programming language, I would say, but even stricter. Every symbol means exactly one thing and it's led with a lot of subtlety. When you try to read a proof or a textbook without some formal training, it can feel like you're trying to debug someone's code without really knowing the syntax of the language itself. You can stare at it for hours and you can get each word individually, but you can still miss the point. And the third part is you probably did miss the intuition. STEM courses often prioritize getting to the result. The calculation works, so let's just move on. But maths done properly is about the why. What does the limit actually mean? What's actually happening beyond the scenes when you diagonalize a matrix? If you don't pause to build that intuition, the concepts become brittle and they fall apart when you try to build more ideas on top of them. But the good news is you can absolutely fix this. When you decide to get serious about maths, it can feel like standing in front of a ginormous library. Topology, group theory, real analysis, category theory, PDEs, logic. It's really overwhelming, but here is the secret. You don't need to know everything, you need a core. If you master this core, everything else will feel really, really accessible afterwards. So let's break it all down. The first thing is proof techniques, and this is definitely the most important one. If you cannot read or write a basic proof, everything else will be really shaky. Proofs are not just a formality, they're how you know you actually understand something. So what I would do is I would advise you to learn direct proofs, induction and strong induction, contradiction, contrapositive and existent proofs. And I would practice recognizing which method is suited for what kind of statement. And this is your toolkit. Without it, even simple theorems will feel like some black holes. In terms of resources, I would recommend the book How to Prove It by Daniel Velleman. It's really clear, it's approachable, it's rigorous. And in terms of a free online resource, uh, there's the proofwiki.org, which is great for quick reference. And in terms of online course, I would recommend Brilliant's Foundational Math Path. Pretty much everything on there is really, really good. Sets and logic are the grammar of maths. Basically, sets define what you're working with and logic defines how you reason about them. So you'll meet concepts like unions, intersections, power sets and functions in a new, really precise way. Logic gives you quantifiers, you know, for all there exists, 
and helps you structure your arguments very, very cleanly. If you are from a CS background, this will actually tie really beautifully to Boolean logic and data structures. And in terms of resources, a book we've got Naive Set Theory by Paul Harmos, and this is short, it's readable, it's quite a classic to be honest. It has a free online resources, there's MIT's OCW Mathematics or Computer Science. It has great logic and set theory lectures plus notes. And in terms of online courses, Brilliance Logic is actually a really, really good introduction for this. As the third pillar, I would put linear algebra, but done properly. So you've probably used matrices and vectors before, but now I would say it's time to understand them, understand the underlying uh, concepts behind them. So what is a vector space? What does it really mean for vectors to be linearly independent? What's happening geometrically when you change a basis, when you diagonalize, or when you project onto a subspace? As you might already know, linear algebra underpins quantum mechanics, machine learning, computer graphics optimization, pretty much everything. If you master it deeply, your maths world will really open up, I would say. In terms of resources, I would recommend the book Linear Algebra Done Right by uh, Schultz and Exler. It focuses on concepts, not computation. In terms of online courses, I would recommend um, 3 Blue, 1 Brown actually has a really good uh, video series, The Essence of Linear Algebra. It's visual, obviously, free on YouTube. And in terms of a brilliant course, I think their Linear Algebra course is actually really, really good. The fourth one is Real Analysis, and this is where calculus gets really rigorous. You'll learn what limits actually mean, not just how to compute them. You'll understand continuity, differentiability, integrability, not as rules to apply, but as properties to prove, which I'm gonna say it's so much fun. Like you learn so many good techniques and they're very, very satisfying when you know how to do them. You'll finally see basically why the epsilon delta stuff matters so much and how it ensures that your results aren't built on sand, I guess. Yes, it is challenging, but as I've said, it's insanely satisfying. As resources for a book, we've got a classic understanding analysis by Stefan Abot. It's a warm, intuitive introduction. Um, in terms of a free online resource, there's the MIT OCW Real Analysis Lectures. In terms of online course, I recommend the Khan Academy's Mathematical Analysis. And the last pillar is discrete maths and combinatorics. If you're from CS back, if you are from a CS background, this is actually your playground. You know, graph theory, counting, recursion, generating functions, trees, matchings. It gives you the tools to reason rigorously about algorithms and various probability structures. Once you've built this foundation, you'll stop feeling like you are faking it in math heavy areas. So you will own the concepts, I want to say. And in terms of resources, I would recommend the book Discrete Mathematics and its Applications by Kenneth Rosen. It is big, but it's very comprehensive. In terms of a free online resource, MIT's OCW, Mathematics or Computer Science, a really good one. And in terms of online course, I recommend the Coursera course, which is Introduction to Discrete Mathematics for Computer Science Specialization. And there you have it. If you master these, you'll have the language of maths and not just buzzwords, not just formulas. And of course, how do you start learning this without droning in dense books or getting lost in endless theory? Well, let me recommend to you Brilliant. Brilliant interactive courses are designed not just to help you memorize formulas, but to help you think like a mathematician. Every course is built around active problem solving because maths is not something that you passively read, it's something that you do. Their foundational math learning path and their courses in logic, linear algebra, probability, data visualization, and so on, guide you through concepts one step at a time. Each problem basically builds on the last, so you're not just learning isolated facts, you're building real understanding, which is really important. What I personally love is the mix of hands-on problem solving, instant feedback, and very beautiful visual explanations. It's like you're having a tutor who knows exactly what, why, and where you're getting stuck at and helps you break through that confusion. Whether you're brushing up on basics, whether you're tackling advanced topics or preparing for quant interviews, I would say that Brilliant is a fantastic way to keep your learning structured, engaging and honestly pretty fun. So head to my link brilliant.org slash Roman, which you also have down in the description below to start learning for free and you will also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. It's really a great investment in yourself and in making maths, you know, actually click. Right, so we can all admit you're not 17 anymore. You have a job, maybe you even have a mortgage or a dog that keeps interrupting all of your study sessions. Your brain though is still really sharp, but your time, your focus and energy are now really precious. So how do you actually learn math seriously as an adult? Well, to begin with, don't just read, do. 
As I've mentioned before plenty of times, maths is active. Reading a textbook or watching a lecture feels productive, but it can give you a false sense of understanding. You only know a concept when you can actually apply it, when you can solve a problem, write out the proof or explain why something actually works. And the practical tip here would be that for every theorem you read, you close the book and you try to reconstruct it from memory. For every worked example, cover the solution and do it yourself, then check where you went wrong. This was my go-to-study technique every time I had an exam or an Olympiad and it worked every time. And if I were to suggest you a habit related to this, it would be that for every 30 minutes of reading, you spend at least 30 minutes solving problems. It will feel slower, yes, but your understanding will be real, which I think is more valuable long term. Get good at Googling. The internet is probably the greatest maths tutor ever created, but only if you use it well. Websites like Stack Exchange, Math Overflow, Reddit R slash Learn Math, and YouTube channels, for example, 3 Blue one brown um, number file have brilliant explanations that might click in ways your textbooks really do not. My practical tip here would be that before searching, you formulate your questions very clearly. So for example, instead of uh, integration by parts help, ask why does integration by parts work, connection to product rule or something like that. But I would say to approach this with a pinch of salt, so try to be very disciplined about this. Try for 15 to 20 minutes yourself before Googling because that struggle builds intuition. But also do not get stuck for hours when help is literally just a search away. Prioritize clarity over speed. You're not cramming for an exam, you're way past that. You're building a mental toolkit. Rushing just to say I cover chapter three won't help when chapter four builds on ideas you just glossed over. One of my favorite tips for this is to keep a maths journal. When something finally clicks, write down the insight in your own words. Again, this will slow you down, but that's really good long term. I actually always used to have a designated notebook which was solely for this throughout both high school and uni and it helped enormously when prepping for exams. And here I would suggest that you need to change your mindset a tiny bit. So if a topic takes a week or a month, that's okay. It's much faster than having to relearn it in six months because it just doesn't stick at all. Teach what you learn. There's no better test of understanding than explaining something. When you teach, even if it's to an imaginary audience, you discover gaps that you didn't really know you had in the first place. So my practical tip here would be to start a private blog, for example, or a Twitter thread, or just voice record yourself explaining what you've learned. If you're brave, of course, do post it on a YouTube short or on Reddit, and you might actually be able to get some uh, people that are interested in the same thing, build a community or something, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Yeah, my, my point is you will build a personal reference that you can revisit and maybe even help someone else that's on the same journey. You will need though to accept that maths will make you feel stupid sometimes. Maths, I would say, humbles everyone. Every mathematician is stared at a problem thinking, how am I this dumb? You know, that frustration, that's your brain stretching and that's how growth happens normally. My practical tip here is that when you're stuck, take a break and come back later. Often the solution pops into focus when your brain has had the time to process it subconsciously. And in terms of mindset, I would say that a bit of a change is needed here as well, just so you can recognize that feeling stuck is not failure, it's actually when learning happens. And if it always feels easy, you know, you wouldn't be growing. Just like in the gym, you know, if uh, you were lifting the same five dumbbell kilos all the time, you would not see any muscle growth. So it's the same here. But what doesn't actually work? Well, skimming books without solving any problems. You're gonna feel like you're learning, but it won't stick when you need it the most. Rushing to cover too much at once. Again, quantity does not equal quality. You'll burn out or you're gonna build a very shaky foundation. Getting stuck in resource shopping mode. It's really easy to think that a perfect book or perfect course will make everything click, but the truth is that any decent resource will work as long as you actually start and you're very, very consistent with it. And the last mistake is thinking that you have to understand everything before trying anything. Maths is learned in layers. You often need to start applying ideas before you fully grasp them because that's how clarity emerges. Here is the payoff though. The moment when a symbol filled page starts to make sense, when a proof clicks and you can actually see the bigger picture finally, when math stops being this mystical black box and starts being a toolkit that you can actually use. 
Deep maths knowledge sharpens you, and not just for pond interviews or AI work or research, but in how you think. It makes you clearer, more rigorous, and more articulate. And I'll say it's not magic, it's a skill, and you can definitely build. So if you're serious about diving into maths, do it. Start small, you know, one proof at a time, one concept at a time. It's not about being naturally good, naturally gifted. It's about building the skill, like coding, like physics, like solving Wordle in two tries. And if this helped, do please hit the like, comment down below with your background, and let's build a community of people learning maths properly. Speaking of community, I actually have launched a Discord server where like-minded people that are interested in maths, in coding, in uh, quant finance, can interact with each other, can help each other, socialize, and share resources and everything that they find interesting. So if you're interested in joining, I have a link down in the description below. And I hope to see you there. Definitely do subscribe to my channel if you want more practical guys from maths to quant finance to what does this even mean moments. And if you want to see more of me, I definitely am a lot more active on Instagram. You have all of the links down in the description below. Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And now go prove something for real. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline Want you by my head